Huddersfield are a mess. The Terriers are a former staple of the Premier League over the past half decade or so, but they now find themselves in danger of relegation to League One. At the time of recording, they sit equal last in the championship relegation battle. But nah, we're heading north. Mr. Rebuild is getting the Terriers back where they belong. And even further, European champions. This is the default side we have here in FIFA 23 with Huddersfield, but there are some big, big changes to be made to this team. We've got ourselves a whole bunch of older strikers. Majority of our strikers are over 30 years of age. So my number one priority in this first season at Huddersfield is getting a star striker for the future, and I've identified Ramiro Enrique as being that man, the man from Orlando City. Can we get him? They want a 6% sell-on clause. I'm taking that off. Come on. Come on, Kaka. Let us have him. 4.5. I can deal with that. Let's go get ourselves Romaro and Enrique. I do plan on having a huge clean out this season, though. Let's see what we can get done. And there we go, lads. The first signing in our mystery build era at Huddersfield is for Ramiro Enrique. Welcome to the Terriers. And the first man out of the club here in the mystery rebuild era is for Dewan Holmes as the American is headed to Ibar. And we've got the first loan move, Romani Edmonds Green is off to Osasuna for the year. And the young Australian shot stopper by the name of Nicholas Bilakapic is off to Montreal in the MLS for two years. Going to be parting ways with our backup goalkeeper, Lee Nichols, who is off to Rangers. He's heading to Glasgow for 2.9 mil. Another loan offer here, another loan deal. Headley, our backup left back, is off to the Portuguese League. And Jordan Rhodes is hitting the road. He's heading to Norwich. So many loans this year. Hello, old friend. It's been a while. Liberato Kakache, the Kiwi left back, is going to join us here from Empoli. He has had some spectacular appearances in rebuild history. He is hoping he can add another to the rebuild hall of fame. The clean out continues, lads. Tom Lees is off to Levante. Danny Ward is headed to the Austrian League. And Jonathan Hogg is off to Gil Vicente. I had to do it, lads. I had to do it. We needed ourselves a stabilizer and an upgrade in the midfield. So let's go bring Aaron Moy back to Huddersfield. He was such a key figure in getting Huddersfield promoted initially to the Premier League. So let's see if he can help us do it once again. We have signed the Australian legend from Celtic for 3.75 million pounds, which is an absolute steal if I'm being completely honest. Only a C! Man's literally a plus 10 upgrade in the midfield and they want to give us a C. We will also be saying goodbye though to Josh Ruffles, who is off to the Turkish League. So it has been a very, very busy start to life here in charge of Huddersfield. The goal for this season is to survive the relegation battle. We just need to do better than Huddersfield are doing in real life, and I'll consider season one a success. So here we are, the 1st of January. We're currently sitting seventh in the championship, and the thing is, those draws are killing us. We have as many losses as first place Norwich, who are only 10 points ahead of us. I'm not saying Huddersfield should give us the job in real life, but I'm kind of saying Huddersfield should give us the job in real life. Promotion is on the cards this year. I mean, if you scroll down, yeah, we are. We are chilling. We are chilling in the relegation battle. This is a dream start. Let's get those Terriers back to the Prem. Our squad depth numbers are absolutely dreadful at the moment. And we didn't have a crazy amount of money, but we've still managed to get ourselves a young English talent. Sammy Braybrook is joining us here from Leicester City. The FIFA gods have been kind to us as well because when I tried to sign him, when I was negotiating with Brendan Rodgers, he was 64 overall. And in the time between them accepting our offer and him accepting our contract, he went up to a 65. So. It's the small wins in life. It's those draws that have killed us. We have finished one point, one point out of the playoff pitcher. 78 points, Luton Town just sneaking ahead of us, but at least we survive relegation. Speaking of relegation, let's go check out the sides that are heading down to League One. It's gonna be Rotherham, Millwall and Swansea. It's surprising to see Millwall there. Man United have won the FA Cup. Tottenham have won the Carabao Cup and it is going 
going to be Burnley joining Watford and Norwich in the Premier League next season. It makes sense. Burnley are literally tearing up the league in real life. Your season one Champions League winners are Real Madrid. Inter Milan take down Tottenham to win the Europa. And it is West Ham winning the Conference League. What a first season from Ramiro Enrique. The growth is phenomenal, but it's proven that the growth is going to come for years to come because he's bagged himself 22 goals and seven assists. That is a dream start. Also, Aaron Moy winding back the clock. Aaron Moy's grown plus one overall and he's got himself 12 goals and five assists. I now feel justified in signing the bold Messi. It's not even the bold Messi, it's the bold Pilo. A phenomenal first season though in charge of Huddersfield. Let's see if we can make the push in season two up to the Premier League. But here we go lads, promoted to the Premier League, bring on season three and bring on the big smoke. For me, this season is focused on improving our defense. Our attack is looking good for the time being, but our defense is starting to age. We don't have crazy amounts of money, so I'm putting a lot of money into the right back position. Now, it says we can get Jaden Bogle here, who has 12 months remaining on his contract for 7.8 million pounds. They want 15%, but the green tension makes me think we might get away with 7, 8. Yes, we do. Instincts and experience kicking in again. Let's get Jaden Bogle into the club. Get in there, lads. The big signing to begin the season is at the right back position, getting some more English talent into the club. Welcome to Huddersfield Town, Jaden Bogle. I do want us bringing in another center half to the squad here to be an upgrade on Matty Pearson. The thing is, we need the money. So I'm going to sell Matty Pearson to Braga and get 1.35 million pounds in return. But to be honest, we're going to have to sell a lot of players. We will be saying goodbye though to another center half. He's not a starting center half, but he's a big name. Big name's not even a fair way to describe him. Regardless though, what I'm trying to say is William Boyle is out of here. And we're also going to be saying goodbye just for the season to our signee from last January, Sammy Braybrook who's off to Torino. Ryan Schofield has come back from a loan move last year, and we're immediately sending the young goalkeeper out once again. He's off to Stade Brestois for two seasons. We're really trying to scrape pennies together to get ourselves a new center half. Connor Mahoney, the latest player leaving the club. But there we go, lads. We get ourselves a center half. He wasn't like at the top of my short list. He was on there. Like the guys at the top, we just couldn't afford. So we've signed Valentin Gomez from the Argentinian League. But here is the starting 11. Here is the side that we have ready for this second season in charge. Can we break ourselves into the promotion pitcher? I certainly hope so, but I'm not going to lie. There could be some room for improvement. I don't know. I'm in, I'm very interested by this season. Although we did get manager of the month already. So that is a strong start to the season. We got manager of the month. You can't see it because my big ass head's blocking it, but we got three draws. This promotion pitcher is bloody tight, lads. We sit one point out of the automatic spots in third position. Everton and Fulham and Bournemouth with a seed three sides relegated, which is wild. Would never see Fulham getting relegated, but can we make the push towards promotion? So we have missed out on promotion automatically by just three points. Again, what is it with the draws? But we are in the championship playoffs. We're facing West Brom. It's either going to be ourselves, West Brom, Sheffield United, or Fulham back in the Premier League. Come on, lads. First leg is on the road at the Hawthorne Stadium, taking on West Bromwich Albion in the first leg. It is a 3-1 win for us. Get in there. There. Second leg, 3-1 up for a spot in the championship playoff finals. Get in there, another 3-1 win. We have demolished West Brom. I'm praying Aaron Moy is not suspended. Aaron Moy is suspended, come on. But here we go, ladies and gentlemen, headed to Wembley Stadium, a spot in the Premier League on the line. Is it going to be Sheffield United or Huddersfield back in the Premier League? It is going to be Huddersfield. We take them down, 3-1, Enrique with a brace, and Rudoni puts the final nail in Sheffield United's coffin. We are going up, say we are going up. Now the big question is, can we stay up? Taking a look back at the championship though, of course, Bournemouth and Everton getting promoted alongside ourselves, and in the relegation battle, it's Bristol City, Blackburn, and Wigan all going down. Man City have won themselves an FA Cup. Wolverhampton have won themselves a Carabao Cup. Man City, a very successful season for them. Sporting have stopped Tottenham from getting more European silverware. And Atalanta 
Atlanta win the Conference League. Nah, Enrique is genuinely a stud. Ramiro Enrique, 32 goals, 8 assists. He has carried us to the Premier League. This kid is a star. Again, Aaron Moy, he has lost one overall, but... 15 goals and three assists. I am so glad that I signed him. And Jack Rudoni has gone up plus seven. This, this team is exceeding expectations. I am, however, gonna let two players leave on freeze. 58 rated goalkeeper, 60 rated defender. I can go get free agents that are higher rated. We are in the Premier League and I intend on staying here, lads. We're gonna go out and make a huge signing. Turkish wonder kid, Arda Gula is going to join us here from Fenerbahce to start life in the Premier League. It's all well and good for us to sign a whole bunch of young players, but I truly think we're going to need some experienced, higher rated defenders in this squad if we're going to survive. So I have found three experienced Premier League defenders on the free agents list. Eric Bailly, Willy Bolly, and Harry Slabhead Maguire. And for me, it's a no-brainer. Let's try getting Harry Maguire into this side. Obviously, People have their opinions about him, but it is obvious that he is going to be such a crucial big signing in our survival fight this season. Three-year deals, perfectly fine by me. £46,000 a week, and Harry Maguire is going to accept our offer. To get that amount of experience for free, that is invaluable in my opinion. I think the Huddersfield colours suit him. Looking good, Slabhead, looking good. We are going to be saying goodbye, though, to Oliver Turton, who is headed to Estoril for £770 thousand pounds. Sammy Braybrook off on a two-year loan to Feyenoord. We knew that some big clubs were going to start coming in here for Ramiro Enrique. There is no chance that our king, Ramiro, is headed anywhere, especially not to Chelsea. I'm blocking all offers. Another loan as well, Josh Austerfield off to Aruka. This transfer was so irrelevant, it didn't even make the news screen, but Danny Grant is out of here. Get in there. We get ourselves a new right winger. It's Aaron Moyes, former teammate at Celtic, Lial Abada. The Israeli right winger joining us here from Celtic for literally 18.086781 pounds. That shows how little money we had left to push on this deal. We're grinding out this Premier League season. Yuta Nakayama has this, like this transfer honestly took so long to go for, but the Japanese center half is headed to the Netherlands. And the Australian shot stopper, Nicholas Bilokapic is headed off to Casapia for the season. So this is the team tasked with Premier League survival. Can we do it? I do not know. Do I, Aaron Moy's gone down. That hurts us a lot, but I'm hopeful that we can survive the Premier League this year. We're really going to need our front three to have a belter of a year. You look at the table, we're doing good. 13th, that is cool. But then you pan your eyes over to the points column. And this is a serious relegation battle. We currently sit five points clear of the drop zone on 22 points. But this season could go either way. I mean, a couple wins and we could find ourselves maybe pushing for Conference League. But... To be totally honest, I'd just be happy to survive. Vaslik's overall though is rapidly decreasing and I'm worried that this could this could really hurt us deep into the season. And we don't have a crazy amount of money to go and get ourselves a star-studded goalkeeper. So I'm about to go on a hunt to see if we can get somebody for the next six months. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It is going to be a plus four upgrade in between the sticks. He's not our goalkeeper of, this, of the future, but he might just be enough to help us survive relegation this year. David Ospina, welcome to Huddersfield. We have survived by one point. One point. We survived. Nine wins, nine draws, 20 losses, 36 points. Burnley have 36, Brighton have 35, and then Brentford are in the relegation zone with 35 points. Very happy. We knew this season was going to be ugly, but we're safe. At the other end of the state of the table, though, it's going to be Manchester City almost going invincible and almost going Centurions. Chelsea have won the FA Cup. We got a thumped in the fourth round. I think that's like round of 36. I, I mean, 46 or whatever it is, 64. I would love for us to get an FA Cup on our hands though. Really any sort of cup, if I'm being completely honest. Arsenal win the Carabao. Man City add another Champions League to their trophy cabinet. Sporting win the Europa League. And it's going to be Athletic Bilbao winning the Conference League. I think it'll come as no shock to anybody that Ramiro Enrique was our savior this year. 19 goals, four assists, but just one overall upgrade which is definitely 
a change in trend from the Argentine. Really sad to see that Aaron Moy is starting to drop off though. Nowhere near his best season. We might, we're might gonna have to look at upgrading him next year. You may as well start calling us the Celtic Terriers because we've signed another Celtic midfielder. He's also a former Fulham player, but it is gonna be Matt O'Reilly joining us here from Celtic. We have paid 25 million pounds to bring him across. And we're gonna be saying goodbye to David Kasimu here as the Nigerian midfielder heads south to Bournemouth. But after a scouting expedition that has spanned all four corners of the globe, we we find ourselves who I believe is going to be our next star goalkeeper. It is Moises Ramirez, the Ecuadorian shot stopper, joining us here from Almeria. No matter how old or how low he decreases, though, there is not a chance I am selling Aaron Moy in this rebuild. He will retire a Huddersfield player. So this is our starting 11 for season four. And whilst I'm pretty happy with it, I really wanted us to get another center midfielder into the side. There were some players like Thomas and like Helic that I've tried to sell, but I just couldn't. So it's going to be interesting whether having High as our lowest rated player, which ironically, the man that's named High is the worst player in the starting 11. But time will tell whether this affects us or not. I just don't want second season syndrome to kick us in the ass. All right, we need to turn it on. We're in a worse position than we were last year. But look at those draws. Oh, the draws are killing me, man. 10 draws, six losses. Oh, we should be competing for Europe. I mean, look at that. Wolves on Aston Villa are sitting sixth with six losses. Oh my God. Yet yeah, we're in the relegation battle. All right, I'm turning it up a gear this window. Bring it on. Let's go. I agreed deals for four of our players in the period between the windows closing and opening. So Schofield is headed to Hamburg. Helic is headed to Valladolid. Jackson is headed to Darmstadt. And the big one is going to be Sorba Thomas headed to Leeds United for 8.2 million pounds. And we're going to be throwing all of our eggs and to be frank, all of our budget into the signing of Kaspar Kozlowski. The Polish centre midfielder is trading the blue and white of Brighton for the blue and white of Huddersfield. All is good, lads. All is good. 14th, we avoided second season syndrome, but we seriously need to take a look at ourselves in the mirror and figure out how we're going to get ourselves up into that top half of the table and up towards European football. It is going to be Burnley, Fulham and Middlesbrough getting relegated. Of course, we find ourselves in the log jam towards the middle of the table, but the champions this year are going to be Tottenham. Manchester City fell off massively. Liverpool defeated Sheffield Wednesday in the FA Cup final. At least we got a little closer this year, made it to the quarter finals. How did we lose to Burnley? And Wolves have won the Carabao Cup. Why are Leverkusen winning the Champions League? Arsenal winning an all English Europa League final. And the Conference League title goes to Ajax. Getting their revenge against Tottenham after that 2019, was it 2019 Champions League final? Or Champions League semi final? should I say. Enrique back to his best though, plus three growth, 21 goals, five assists, but someone that's flying under the radar massively, Jack Redoni, 86 overall. According to SoFIFA, his initial potential is plus 80, so, well, it's 80 potential, so clearly dynamic player potential, doing its thing on the guy. We are gonna be saying goodbye though to Thomas Vaslik, the Czech goalkeeper who is retiring at the end of the season. Four seasons in the books though, lads. Let's get ourselves up though and start thinking about European football down the line. Season number five, our third season in the Premier League is kicking off with a not so remarkable player departure, Etienne Kamara. Goodbye. I really want Nicolas Bilakapic to be trained up to essentially become our backup goalkeeper deep in this rebuild. So we're going to send him out on another loan. But for me this season, there is only one position I want us to improve in the starting 11. And that is going to be center back. So we're going to be talking to Sporting here, trying to sign the Croatian center half, Josip Sutalo. I want to see if we can get him for 40 million pounds. Come on, Sporting. Do us a solid 42.4 with a 5% sell on clause. I'll keep the sell on clause because I genuinely don't think I would resell him. Let's see if they take 41 because I need to have enough money to offer him a contract. They are going to accept that. Get in there, lads. Now it's all about getting the contract over the line. Bang, we get it over the line. That is a huge upgrade. My goal, like I'm just trying to do everything in impossible in our 
in our possibilities to get ourselves up into the top half of the table. This is our third year in the Premier League. I don't want to be I don't want to be competing in the relegation zone. I want to be competing for Europe. And with the little bit of remaining budget we have, we're going to sign ourselves a young Spanish regen attacking midfielder. It is Felipe Castro joining us here. Come on, lads. Top half finish, surely. Our team is now all 80 rated or higher. Kozlowski and Gula are lagging a little bit behind, but we need the lads to just keep on pushing and get ourselves a Conference League, a Europa League. I'm not going to say Champions League, but I just want a sniff, just a sniff of European footy. This is exactly where we wanted to be. Seventh in the Premier League right now, but we could, like, we're only two points behind Man City, although we do have a lot of competition. We have so many teams breathing down our necks. Like, this second half of the season is going to be intense. We finish 7th in the Premier League this season. It's crazy what happens when we don't draw a billion games. We, we lost 14, so oh, I don't know. I'll never be happy. But at least that means European football is headed our way in season number 6. Chelsea take down the league. They take out the league. That top 4 was so close. Scrolling down the table on the relegated side, Leicester, Palace, Watford have had a stinker. West Ham United have won the FA Cup. I know for a fact that we made it to the quarterfinals where we lost to Manchester City. Speaking of Manchester City, they lost the Carabao Cup final to Man United. Real Madrid have won the Champions League. Marseille win the Europa. And it is Jose Mourinho and Roma winning the Conference League. Rudoni is quickly pressing his claims as our best player. He's got the captain's armband. He's 88 rated and he has bagged himself 21 goals. The golden boot at Huddersfield along with nine assists. What a year, Jack Rudoni. It is a sad time though, ladies and gentlemen. David Ospina is retiring, but the big one that hurts the main man himself, Professor X, the bald Pilo, Aaron Moy is retiring. Aaron Moy, one of my favorite players of all time, a former Western Sydney Wanderer and a legend of Australian football. Thank you, Aaron. Thank you. We have received a massive blow to start this season. Ramiro Enrique has submitted a transfer request. I don't want him to leave. I don't want to accept an offer for him. Unless it's an insane contract, unless it's an insane offer, I might just ignore them, honestly. I, I don't know, man. I'm conflicted. The dude has been a stud since day one. I don't want him to leave. It hurts the soul. It really does. Does, but it had to be done, lads. Ramiro Enrique leaving the club, heading to Real Madrid, but we did get 158 million pounds in return. So at least we're going to have a crazy amount of money to spend on a top quality striker. My line of thinking was he had two years remaining on his contract. I could take the risk that I could get him back on side between now and then, or I could cash in right now and get him for a D, like get 158 million pounds back rather than having him walk on a free in a year and a half. I might be taking a risk here, fellas, but there wasn't too many strikers in the world that I wanted to sign. Ansu Fati is listed as being able to play striker as well as left wing. So I'm taking a bit of a risk risk in the hopes that he's not going to be destroyed. Like sometimes it says players can play a certain position, then you get them in there and they're just absolutely hopeless. So Chavi wants 142 million for Fati. I'm just not prepared to pay that to be honest. Let's say 130 million pounds to bring Fati from Barcelona to Huddersfield. They say 133.2. I can get around that. I can get around that. But there we go, lads. The biggest signing in our time in charge of Huddersfield. It is going to be Ansu Fati. Like I said, this is a massive risk at the striker role, but I'm willing to take it for a talent of Ansu Fati's caliber. You're gonna look good in blue and white, Ansu. You are going to look good. See, that's what I mean, lads. It says minus two when he goes to striker. Oh, let's go see how long it takes if we train him to become a striker. I'm worried though, lads, I'm worried. It is going to take 402 weeks. 402 weeks. He's got 87 shooting for God's sakes. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna train him as a center forward because hopefully that will make it like after, then I can play around the formation. That's still gonna take over half a year. God damn it. I'm really trying to make this season one to remember. 
We are going to part ways with our starting center half, Valentin Gomez here, headed to Chelsea, and we get ourselves 34.8 million pounds in return. And we've also sold Josh Austerfield to Stoke City for 1.35 million pounds. We have done all of that to sign Mohamed Simakan here from Arsenal, 75.1 million pounds, an 87 rated center half. And I'm happy. Normally we get cursed and normally we get stitched up. FIFA drops the value of players after we sign them. His value's gone up about 10 mil since we signed him, so thanks for having my back for once, FIFA. But lads, if you are enjoying today's rebuild so far, make sure if you're not already subscribed that you do down below. We're on the back end now towards 500,000 subscribers, so all of your guys' help helps a lot. Big season coming up here, lads. Huge one, some could say. Our front three is thriving, but our midfield, Gula, not so much O'Reilly, but Gula and Kozlovski, I would say are the most in danger right now. They need to get rolling, need to get their upgrades up. Our back line's looking solid, but this team, surely we're gonna be making the push towards Champions League football. But the thing is, because West Ham won themselves the Carabao the F Carabao Cup, I think it was. They've qualified for the Europa League. We're not in any European football. What a stitch up. Wolves get in there, but we don't. So we've only got Premier League this year. I feel hard to hunt by. This is huge. This is huge. We're currently top of the Premier League here on the 1st of January. Although again, seven points separate eighth place Chelsea and us. So we might be leading now, but we cannot get comfortable here in the second half of the season. We need to put our foot on the gas and get ourselves not just top four, but potentially a Premier League title. We're also into the semi-finals of the Carabao Cup. Let's see how deep we can go there. Ansu Fati finally able to be converted to a center forward. It's going to keep him there, but let's see if that changes anything to do with the striker role. It's still 215 weeks. I may as well just work on everything else and get his skill moves and weak foot up and just play him as a striker still. Because to be fair, he now has plus one in this department, so maybe it's all worked out. I have been scouring far and wide for any pre-contract player options. There is nowhere near as many pre-player, pre-contract player options in FIFA 23 as years gone by, but we have found this guy here, Sergio Cameo, who we are gonna sign as a backup striker next season. Welcome in season number, whatever it's gonna be, to Huddersfield, Sergio Cameo. Oh, we've lost the lead of the Premier League, but I cannot complain. We finish second in the Premier League here with Huddersfield, 72 points. That top four race was bloody close, lads, but we are gonna be playing Champions League football for the first time next season. Over the moon about that one, but as we scroll down the table, Fulham, Burnsley, and Burnsley, Fulham, Burnley, and Middlesbrough are all relegated. Manchester United did win the FA Cup, and unfortunately, we did lose to Chelsea in the Carabao Cup semi-finals. Borussia Dortmund winning the Jurgen Klopp derby in the Champions League final. Leipzig winning the Europa League. I'm still salty we weren't in the Europa League. Or even the Conference League. Wolves won the Conference League. If we were in that competition, I'm almost certain we would have come away as winners. Yeah, nah, Rudoni is clear, man. Rudoni is clear clear. This dude is a first ballot rebuild Hall of Famer. 26 goals this season, four assists. Ansu Fadi with a very strong start to life at Huddersfield as well. Really happy with our front three, honestly. We will be saying goodbye though to Harry Maguire, packing his bags and retiring. Well, I don't even know. I just think he's, I'm just going to let him go to be honest. Big season ahead of us though, into the Champions League for the first time. We're pushing for a Champions League title. We're pushing for a Premier League title. We we are pushing for every piece of silverware next season. Here he is, lads. We start off the season with our free pickup here, our pre-contract pickup. Sergio Cameo joining us. I love how he gets this sort of a welcome, but then Ansu Fati just got the standard cutscene. But this season is going to continue in phenomenal fashion. We have got ourselves a new starting center midfielder. If you haven't been able to figure out, it is going to be Connor 
Gallagher here. He's actually joined us from Manchester United, not Chelsea, and we pay 48 million pounds for him. I'm really trying to do everything I can this year to get us in position to compete for the Champions League, signing a veteran backup goalkeeper, Kevin Trapp, will be joining us from Eintracht Frankfurt. Bang, look at that. A new backup center back as well. Our bench is gonna start looking very, very good. Nathan Collins, the Irishman, joining us here from Leicester City. So I'm currently on the hunt to bring in a new backup right winger. I decided to go check out League Un. Look how many right wingers Stard des, des Bois, how we pronounce it, Stard Brestois have. They have six right wingers. Half of the right wing options on this list are from Stard Brestois. And it was only right that we signed one of them. Karamoko Dembele joining us here from Stard Brestois. Also, I apologize if my voice sounds like it's about to go. I had my girlfriend's law school ball last night and it's safe to say your boy was tearing up the dance floor. I think I turned into a human karaoke machine. This team is looking sensational though, lads. Absolutely sensational. We need a big year here out of Gula. I was gonna say Bogle, but he's gone up one overall in the past few weeks, which past few weeks, which is phenomenal. But yeah, let's see what we can do in our first Champions League campaign. Speaking of the Champions League, this is our group, and my god, we have got a challenging group ahead of us. Bayern Munich, tough. Leon, tough. Andelect, sneaky tough. If we get out of this group, my confidence and my ego surrounding this Huddersfield team is going to be through the roof. Yeah, the, the ego is high. The ego is high. The confidence is high. We top group B, what I would argue is the group of death, and we are headed through to the Champions League knockout round for the first time in club history. Only four goals conceded. That is, wow, that is beautiful. Something that I would not describe though as beautiful is our round of 16 opponent. We've got Barcelona. I couldn't get Salzburg. I couldn't get Galatasaray or Feyenoord. We had to get Barcelona. That's the reward for topping the group of death. Things are going incredibly in the Premier League as well. We have really built ourselves a top top team only two losses all season seven points clear at the top of the league on the first of january all right here we go ladies and gentlemen the camp new for the round of 16 barcelona versus huddersfield now a big blow to our back line collins is in as you can see simican at right back because Bogle has been suspended. He's suspended for the first leg. This is a salvaging operation, if you ask me. Let's just not get flogged in the first leg. We do the flogging! Oh my God. Here I was like, all right, we're probably gonna get our ass handed to us. Let's keep it manageable for the second leg. A barter and our summer signing, Conor Gallagher, giving us a 2-0 win. Oh my God. Ironically, Nathan Collins has been suspended for the second leg, but it's okay because he was out back up, center back, back to a full strength. Starting 11 here with a 2-0 lead against Barcelona, which we only go and extend. Conor Gallagher gets himself another goal and we take down Barcelona 3-0 on aggregate. Although yellow cards to Rudoni and Ardegula have me a little nervous, but none of them have been been suspended so we are chilling hmm oh lord give me strength manchester city we're the only two remaining english premier league teams in this champions league campaign and we're facing one another again couldn't i get galatasaray couldn't i get wolfsburg the rest are tough but we've been given manchester city i'm still feeling good though after the barcelona victory let's see if we can carry that over here against man city they got foden and harland who are going to be in their primes right now here goes nothing away at the Etihad for the first leg and it's a one all draw Castro comes off the bench and equalizes for us which is huge given he's like 74 overall everything hangs in the balance right now though one all against Manchester City we're at home in our own backyard can we book ourselves a shock spot to a Champions League semi-final come on Huddersfield come on Huddersfield it's the captain Rudoni in the 77th minute. Come on, lads. 
you love to see it. Radoni getting us into a Champions League semi-final. But we're gonna have to do the semi-finals without a barter for the first leg as the Israeli winger has been suspended. This really has been a Champions League campaign built on suspensions. Two Italian, one German, one English. We have got Juventus in the Champions League semis. We've been away for every first leg so far and it has done us good so far. Also, it must have been tweaking because a barter wasn't suspended for the Champions League. You must have been suspended for another competition, which is music to my ears. Here we go against a very, very good Juventus team, Jude Bellingham with the captain's armband away in Turin. The scoreline is a 2-1 win. We come from behind. That man, Abada, getting a goal to his name and Ansu Fati giving us the lead in the 78th minute. But here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We have one foot. I wouldn't even say one foot. We got like half a toe in the Champions League final, but we have the 2-1 aggregate lead. All we need is a draw and we get ourselves into a Champions League final to take on either AC Milan or Wolfsburg. Here we go. Champions League semi-final, second leg, and we go 2-0 to the good. It could have been three. We haven't lost a game in the entire knockout rounds and we're going to find ourselves comfortably in the Champions League final. Come on, Huddersfield. Come on, the Terriers. What a campaign this has been. So here we go, lads. A Champions League final I was not expecting. We're going to be facing VFL Wolfsburg, friends of the channel, in the Champions League final here in 2029. They took down AC Milan on penalties. Taking a look around the grounds, though, Leon, the team that was in our Champions League group, ended up losing the Europa League final. Liverpool won the Conference League. We finished 10 points clear of Manchester City and add a Premier League trophy to the Huddersfield Trophy Cabinet. That is absolutely awesome to see. I love it. I absolutely love it. And it's clear to see. Defense was the reason. We only conceded 35 goals this year. Scrolling down the Premier League table, it's Tottenham with a very bad season, but it is going to be Leicester, Bournemouth, and Forest getting relegated. Man City did win the FA Cup and Chelsea won the Carabao. What a year it has been though for our captain, Jack Rudoni. 24 goals to his name. This dude is an absolute stud and I'm glad that we've had somebody that is like he had mediocre potential to begin with. I'm glad he has been such a key figure along this journey so far. Very excited to see him in action in this Champions League final. The Santiago Bernabeu is the venue to host one of the most peculiar Champions League finals in recent history. And let's make sure that we're on the right side of history. Xavi Simmons bolting through here. Well done, Conor Gallagher. Rodoni, good turn of pace. Cancelo is keeping up to date with him. Gonna go back. Now go to Fati. Good ball there. Fati going to Rodoni. Rodoni ball into traffic. Headed away. It's a sensational ball from them. It's the Georgian winger laying that one well read Liberato Kikache. I don't mind taking my time here and kind of waiting for the right opportunity. It's been a pretty dead Champions League final so far, but we might have an opportunity here. Bogle is going to cut it around. Send the defender off to the shops. Sending that defender off. Oh, Wolfsburg with the ball here. Wimmer. Good interception, Kikache, but it goes right back to Xavi Simmons. Wimmer playing that one through to Dan Juma, and it's going to be 1 0 to Wolfsburg on the stroke of half time. This is has been such a scrappy game of football. Wolfsburg, I can see why they've made the final. They have been giving us no room to breathe. They penetrate our defense there and have got themselves the lead before half time. Good draw and pass there. Rudoni, get it through to Fati. Look at the space. Fati, he's got options here. Ansu going through to Gallagher. Gallagher's gonna hit it and it's blocked. We might, yes. Kakache's been pulling strings for this offense here. Fati going through. Square it. Shoots. Scores. It's Adagula giving us the lead here. Great passing play there. And we finally string it together. We've looked so we just that little bit off in this game. But we finally get ourselves an attack and get ourselves a goal. Liberato Kakache deserves huge credit though for starting it all off. Javi Simmons, they're going through again here. Huge save from Ramirez. Good ball, Radoni. Now overlap. Good stuff. Bogle running down the wing here. Look at Bogle. I'm going to set it back post. Back post. Oh my god, the keeper's got no clue. Ansu Fati sends the keeper the wrong way. He's glued to the spot. And we have scored one of the great counter-attacking goals. That keeper with absolute sand in his boots. The pace. 
Fati on the spot, on the chest. Look at that. He's going the wrong way. That is incredible. Is that De Gea? De Gea. Thought Fati was going to put it in the other corner. That is insane. Carlo, come on. We've really got momentum with us now. Our left backs and right backs have been studs. Gallagher going here to Rodoni. Rodoni dinks it. Rodoni shoots off the post. Oh, my God. We can't get complacent, though. It's only one goal in this. 84th minute. Oh, it's a good ball from them. Xavi Simmons going in there. Get rid of it. Get rid of it. No. Oh, my God. Xavi Simmons has just made it too all for Wolfsburg. Are you kidding me? Here I am getting so confident. And then they've just put in a belter of a finish to the top corner. Put the pressure, Gula. Put the pressure. Force a mistake. Force a mistake. Nah, it's going to be an extra 30 minutes here. We're headed to extra time for the Champions League final. We blew it. Get out wide to Abana. Come on, Abana. An early opportunity here in extra time. Abana's going to make it 3-2 in the 94th minute. Wolfsburg defense, they're still caught in the sheds. Wolfsburg still have their heads at full time. We've picked them apart way too easily here. And we take the lead in extra time. Not like this, lads. Stay focused. Stay focused. Oh, get that one away. Get that one away. No, not straight out to them. What a save, Ramirez. He probably should have held on to it, but... It's a save nonetheless. Corner for Wolfsburg. First half stoppage time. We're going to swing that one front post. We're going to header it away. Ah, oh, ref, blow that whistle. How much extra time do you guys want? Just clear it. Just clear it. All right, I'm going to make a halftime substitution here. Kozlowski is coming on in place of Artagula. Oh, no. Nah. Get that one away. Good. Well won from Abada. Come on, counter-attacking time. Gallagher, I'm just running it as much as I can. Gallagher's going to swear. Oh, Paredes. Good stuff. Satalo goes back to Chavi Simmons, though. We force a save with Ramirez. This is terrifying, lads. Terrifying. Get it away. Get it away. Well headed away there from Conor Gallagher. Oh, we got lucky there with the ricochets. Go early. Good stuff. Come on, turn and run. Play it. Come on. Kozlowski's got the fresh legs. Kozlowski, back post. O'Reilly, that's going to be it. O'Reilly on the counter attack. Wolfsburg are going to concede again. And it is going to surely be Huddersfield Town champions of Europe. What a final, ladies and gentlemen. So back and forth, but we have done it. We have won a Champions League title and successfully rebuilt Huddersfield Town. And here it is, lads, the man himself. He's been with us since day one. It is going to be Radoni, who's going to lift the Champions League title and officially crown Huddersfield Town as European champions. Lads, if you enjoyed today's rebuild, make sure you leave a like on the video and subscribe down below. Click here as well to watch another video and subscribe if you're new around here. Peace.